Hi, I'm Jason Janzik, EdTech graduate student at Boise State University, and this is my reflection video. This is Grays Lake Central High School in Grays Lake, Illinois, a far northern suburb of Chicago. This is where I teach high school social studies, specifically AP Economics and Honors U.S. Government, and have done so in the past 11 years. What's really cool is we're a high school on the verge of a change. We are ready to adapt education technology. And what I've learned at Boise State is going to help us reach the next level. What have I learned? Well, you're about to find out. All right, so one of the first artifacts that we've developed, and one of my most important and favorite ones, uh, comes out of EdTech 542 with Dr. Gerstein. And see, as I mentioned, we were at a school at a crossroads. We were just ready to take on that education technology perspective, uh, but we weren't quite there yet. And instead, we were focusing on Marzano and Wiggins and McTai and this whole understanding by design process, which was important, but there seemed to be a piece missing. And when I came into Dr. Gerstein's class, we talked a lot about project-based learning, and it was something that I thought, well, hey, this is great. This fits into the UBD framework, right? And so when it fits into the UBD framework and I can add technology in it, it's a win-win. So basically what we're looking at right now is this is my website for the entire uh, class for the project. And we were to design a unit, and I centered mine around a Congress unit that said, do we get as good a government as we deserve? All right, and we talk a little bit about beginning with the end in mind, All right? We tie it to standards across the board and things like that. And this is the same concept. This is, runs parallel with UBD. This was fantastic for us crafting the driving question. I had done some of this already as we started laying out our curriculum map at, at work. And now it was time to take the next step and make sure that we could integrate technology with it somehow. And so we have the driving questions. We understood what the driving questions were. They're open-ended, they're provocative, they're challenging. All right, And then the assessment. The assessment piece is always important too. Again, that's the whole concept uh, behind why we're doing what we're doing. If we're not assessing, we're not we're not learning. But one of the things that I really like about this project-based learning program is that the uh, the assessment has to be authentic. And if we go back to the front the front page here, right, we're looking at whether or not we get as good of a government as we de uh, deserve, right. And so at the end the assessment that we're going to be creating. We go back here to the assessment. We looked at some types of summative assessments, a multiple choice quiz, a blog post, things like that. But we also wanted to make it authentic. And Dr. Gerstein did a great job of stressing authentic evaluation. You have to make sure it's authentic. And so part of the, what we created was an authentic evaluation in the, in the form of a public service announcement um, that's talking about the importance of making sure students get involved. Right? And that's something that's more important that just shows up on a multiple choice test. If they're creating something, if they're talking about why it's important along those lines and, and you know, why citizen involvement is, is key, and they're sharing that with other students and they're sharing that in a public service announcement that's going to be on the, on the announcements, that's more authentic than a multiple choice test or an essay. An authentic assessment essentially means is that the audience is no longer just the teacher. It's somebody else. It's it's you know it's authentic. We're not I'm not just the only one doing the evaluating. Everybody else is. And as you go through here and look at the criteria, um, and then the short presentation and the blog post and everything like that, um, and then we create the public service announcements across the board. It's, it was pretty exciting. Students had a had a fun time with it. Um, I don't have any copies of the original public service announcements. In fact, we changed this up this year because it's an election year, and uh, instead of doing public service announcements. The students created some uh, first-time voter websites, which was pretty cool, too, because we talked about the importance of voting. And if you're a first-time voter in Illinois, what does that mean? Where do you go? Who are the candidates? All right? And we used the springboard of this project-based learning uh, class in 542 with Dr. Gerstein to get that particular site going. This is a great example of the first... Uh, first-time voter site that we created. This was, again, based upon the impetus of what we dis we discovered in 542, um, that students were to create a first-time voter site. What are the regulations? Where do we vote? All right, here's what you need to, to vote. Where do we vote? Who are the candidates? And this was all student-centered. And what was really cool is, is for the evaluation for this, um, we I didn't grade this, and the students didn't grade this. I actually sent this off to the Republican Party, 
and they evaluated it based upon what they saw. And we use the Republican Party because that's predominantly who's in the you know who's in the presidential race. And it was interesting because the Republicans with this particular website lit these kids up. Uh, it was pretty bad. They were pretty honest and said you didn't do a good enough job and everything like that. The kids kind of floated through it, coasted through it a little bit. And then when they got this feedback back from these these ranking Republican officials of the county, they got pretty uh, pretty embarrassed and they, they put together a much, much better a much, much better product, which was really neat to see. And that's something that they could never learn from a multiple choice test. And, and that was really what I got from that Ed Tech 542 uh, class. Look at that. That's a powerful learning device right there and a thing of art. In Ed Tech 597 with Dr. Schroeder and Chris Haskell, I learned so much, I transformed the way I and my colleagues teach classes with handheld devices. I even went on to present at a statewide conference about mobile learning. Here, take a look. All right, the next two artifacts that I have are from my EdTech 597 class. And uh, the first one is the final project. And the second one is the presentation that I gave uh, at the Illinois Computing Educators Conference back in the spring of 2011. And I also gave one, uh, this very similar <clears throat> presentation, excuse me, to the uh, IETC down in Springfield, Illinois, in the fall of 2011 as well. But uh, basically, my obsession in, in, <laughs> at Boise State has become mobile learning. Uh, this has been fantastic. It's been transformative. The level of engagement is incredibly high. And so I want to run you through this, this project real quick uh, from... EdTech 597. Basically what it says is the students are going to use real life examples. They're going to get lists of uh, AP economics concepts that we've been studying and they are going to go out into the Grays Lake community and take pictures of those concepts. And basically what they're going to do is they're going to take pictures of those concepts and they're going to upload it all the way to the uh, photo stream, the Flickr photo stream that we have. And from there students will go on to VoiceThread or their blog and upload the pictures and they'll have to explain what is being demonstrated there and it was, was an awesome awesome project the kids got engaged uh, it was a nice formative assessment for me because I was able to see whether or not they were able to to understand those concepts and those real life implications and basically here's a here's something that they uh, there's the slideshow right here <laughs> they're taking pictures in the community um, of these things and then the students are going to go on and explain to them you know what this is what that is what does this mean is this perfect competition monopolistic competition uh, some of them are a little bit of a stretch not quite sure what this one was at first uh, but then the students used scarcity and explained why so it gets the, that critical thinking skill um, and I believe that was monopoly it was a little bit uh, of a stretch with the Miller genuine draft we had to have a conversation with the students about what's appropriate and what's not to post in a high school class um, and then you know some of they would just go through and upload these to the photo stream sprint versus verizon again with that picture sometimes they had a hard time uploading them um, students struggled and, and this, i think this kid kind of stretched a little bit on this one uh, and he said public good and it's a lake in the backyard but they, they had a hard time figuring that out um, a negative externality with you know animals and things like that. Students were able to figure that out, saying, "Hey, look, why are there why is there mud across the board?" So it was really kind of cool. Um, what was really neat though is that I realized that as students were heading out into the community, uh, that I'm just going to let this play through here and see what else pops up. Um, as they were heading out into the community, there's <laughs> we had a long talk with that that mom and that student. Uh, but the, as they were heading out, they had critical thoughts running through their head again and again. You know, what, how does this work? Does this apply to economics? So even though the class was done, it was really kind of cool because I realized as my students were heading out over Christmas break and Thanksgiving break that, that they're going to be thinking about AP economics, that really the, uh, the class didn't end. And this wouldn't have been possible without some type of handheld device. Go out into the community, take a look for externalities. There's scenic Gary, Indiana right there, and uh, be thinking about what you've learned. 
right? And then you're going to be commenting on what you see and what your classmates are seeing. So this is it was really powerful stuff, and and the students really appreciated it too. They they realized that economics was all around them, uh, which was exactly what I wanted them to realize. The next artifact that I'm really proud of is this uh, Prezi that we have here, and this was the Prezi that I presented at. Uh, the Illinois Computing Educators, as well as the IETC conference down in Springfield. And this was me taking the knowledge that I learned in 597 and everything across the board at, at Boise State and presenting it to my colleagues. This was my first step in present, uh, in actually reaching out and doing some professional development outside my building. And I'm just running you through this presentation um, briefly, just in the lieu of time. But basically what I was able to do is present to a full room, which was really cool, over 70 people in there, and uh, talk a little bit about QR codes and texting and pull everywhere and I voted and things, all these things that I learned uh, in Dr. Schroeder and, and Chris Haskell's class, how to use camera. Um, I was introduced to Evernote first in Dr. Schroeder's class, which was awesome. Students are using that now in my class. They're taking pictures and uh, of graphs or me actually walking through a, a, a problem and sending it home so they have it to review. Um, VoiceThread, we use something similar to VoiceThread and we use that, that last APE kind of thing. We put those those images now on uh, VoiceThread, the images that they're, they're putting up on the Flickr and they're commenting on that. All right, uh, Blogging with the phones, this is my cousin stuff, she was using some uh, blogging stuff and, and using the WordPress apps. All right, So it was kind of a joint venture between her and I. Uh, and the presentation went really, really well and there was no way this would have been possible without uh, the knowledge that I gained from 597. Uh, it was fantastic. It was great. It was really cool to have administrators there um, who were like, oh, we're not going to use cell phones ever in the class. And at the end of those 50 minutes, they came up to me and said, wow, uh, this is really powerful stuff. And I'm really going to start you know, letting my, my teachers explore in this and, and pushing the envelope a little bit because we didn't get it, so we didn't allow it. And now that we get it, now we see that the powerful information that, and the power of those handheld devices, we're gonna let uh, we're gonna let our teachers give it a whirl, and, and to, that just blew me away. Uh, and all of that wouldn't have been possible had I not taken 597. And throughout this whole process over the past two and a half years, mobile learning has really become the my focus. How do we get information into our students' hands? How do we get student engagement um, through their their mobile devices? You know, and everything that we do, the students have, you know, they bring their computers essentially in their pockets. And every, just about everything we could do in that classroom can be enhanced by using some type of handheld device. I had a lot of meaningful experiences with a lot of outstanding professors throughout my tenure here at Boise State. But none more awesome than the Cool Teacher podcast with Barbara and Chris. These guys weekly got me motivated to try new things, learn about new tools week in, week out. I can't thank you guys enough. It was fantastic and really made my classroom amazing. This has been an outstanding experience. I'm a better teacher, my students are better lifelong learners, and my colleagues at school are starting to tinker with education technology. And none of that would have been possible without the outstanding support I received from the faculty and my peers throughout the education technology program at Boise State. Thank you very much. It's been great.